Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the Nine Inning Know It All podcast. I am your host, Josh, the Nine Inning Know It All. And today, the day that we are recording this, there is playoff baseball going on. I know that there was a near perfect game, there's been some uh, home runs, there's been a lot of fun stuff today. I have not had a chance to watch any of it uh, because I do not have cable. And even though I have an ESPN Plus membership, that doesn't get me into watching ESPN stuff other than the ESPN Plus stuff. So haven't watched any games. I'm sure at some point I will get to watch a game somewhere, somehow. Who knows? We'll figure it out at some point. But in the meantime, there's playoff baseball going on. And it's good to see that you know after the 60-game the season, even though I think it could have been a longer season, it, it still happened. We had baseball, and that's, that's good. But along with that, we also have more baseball being played right now. We have college baseball getting back on the field. We have practices going. Now, it's different all across the U.S. There are some teams that are able to practice full team, you know, do some inner squad stuff. Uh, there are other teams that are only able to do small groups of guys, whether it be five, ten guys at a time. So um, there's a lot of variations as to – college baseball practices right now. Like I said, it depends on what state they're in, what, you know, what conference, that type of stuff. Uh, but I'm excited today because we're actually going to talk a little bit about NWAC baseball and the fact that it is back. There's practices, there's teams getting together, and uh, I, I'm excited to talk about that. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to have on my pod podcast once again, Ryan Miller from Mount Hood Community College. Ryan, how are things going today? Josh, I'm in my car on the way to practice, so uh, the, the skies are blue, the sun is out. Uh, I don't know that it could be much better than it is right now. Absolutely, and that's one of the things that, you know, it's just, it's great for us to have baseball going again, to get the guys back together again, but also, I mean, the weather up here in the Northwest really is nice. I think it's like 84 degrees up here in, in Longview, Kelso area, so I mean, I really can't ask for much more right now. No, I mean, uh, you know, we started uh, on Saturday, and Friday was rough. Coach Donahue and I actually played in a golf tournament uh, right up near the base of Mount Hood on Friday in the pouring down rain. And all we could talk about was how we were going to get through Saturday's practice. Um, and luckily for us, we got enough of a break that we were still able to get out on the field and get a little work done. But, but uh these are the days that we live for right here. When the sun is out, uh, the skies are blue. We don't have to worry about if the field's going to be playable or not. Uh, we just know that our guys are going to show up and, and we're playing baseball. Yeah, with the guys being back now and being out on the field, you know, how are they responding to getting the chance to, you know, be back on, you know, the, with the, their teammates, be back on there, getting ready for the next week? How, how are they just responding overall? Well, uh, day one, uh, I think things went really well. Guys were excited to be out there. Um, you know, it was it was very um, very limited in what we could do right now. As far as we have guys in small groups, um, we can have up to ten in a group. So we have several small groups that we strategically engineered to have pitchers and catchers, uh, you know, and a couple position guys in every group, so that um, even when they're am amongst their small group, that you know hitters can still face live pitching and pitchers still get to throw to hitters. And, um, you know, it's, I think more than anything, guys are just excited to be back and, and they have that sense of feeling that um, for the first time in a long time, I think that things are moving in the right direction and, and there is some light at the end of the tunnel as far as, you know, looking towards the spring season. And then, you know, I know for a lot of schools, especially at the JUCO level, they've had sophomores from last year. Some guys move on, some guys stay back. Did you guys have uh, a number of guys who could have moved on but end up staying behind another year because of how everything played out last year? You know, we're, we're pretty fortunate as far as um, our roster size goes that we only had six come back. Um, and they were all they were all guys that, you know, had we had uh, a full season last year, they would have had some pretty special opportunities, I think. Um, but they're all getting a chance to come back. Um, you know, I think some programs are, are in tough for situations where they might have had 12 to 15 guys come back. And 
and now you're, you know, trying to play games with, you know, shuffling rosters and the number of incoming guys that you brought in and having these, you know, large rosters to try to manage. Um, I think we're pretty fortunate in the fact that really for us, our numbers this fall are right about in line with where they normally would be. We have a few extra, but, um, you know, not really many more than we would typically have in a normal fall anyways. Yeah, and that, that's, that is nice to hear because I know there's teams in the NWAC who, you know, they went through their normal recruiting process, got the guys coming in, but they had a number of guys stay behind and, and their their team is big to begin with and now it's even bigger. And I just couldn't imagine on top of the small groups, the lack of practice games throughout the fall, that would just make it, I think, it even more difficult than what it already is to try and figure out your roster and, and preparing for the spring. I think it's, I think it makes it real difficult. Um, you know, there, there's just so many, there's so many things that we're not going to be able to get through in the fall that we normally would. Um, we're probably going to go through the entire fall without getting to have a full team workout. Um, it's, it's all going to be small group stuff for us. Um, and so, you know, that's difficult because you want to have an idea heading, you know, when we come back from, from winter break, like we want to have an idea kind of, what we're planning on doing with our roster as far as, are we going to redshirt some guys? You know, are there some guys that, that are going to get cut? Um, you know, who's kind of mi making the squad and, you know, who would you pencil in if, if it was opening day? Like who are the guys on the, on the lineup card? And, you know, the tough part for us is that, you know, the NWAC is really restrictive when you get into conference play um, as far as the number of players that you can have on your active roster when you travel. Well, there's no no limitations when you're at home, but you only get 24 active players when you when you travel. And the hard part for us now, as we look forward moving moving into the spring, is we're scheduled to play 42 conference games with no out of conference games. So right off the bat, you know we're going to have to make decisions really early on as far as who are going to be those guys. Um, and it's unfortunate that we don't get more of a fall to work with. Um, you know, but we're trying to make the most of the situation that we have, and we're just fortunate that we're able to get out on the field because I know there are some programs around that aren't able to even do that this fall. Yeah, and then you mentioned, you know, the change of the spring schedule. I mean, that does – I mean, that changes a lot of things. I mean, I know I've seen a, a few of the kind of schedules come out already, and it's going to be really, you know – from game one, it, it's out there playing to to win because you can't you can't experiment when you're in conference play, and that's it's both a good thing because it brings challenges, but it's also a negative thing because you know you almost have to just if you're not sure about a guy, you almost can't take the risk, and that's just it, it puts you guys as a coach into a tough situation. Right, we've always kind of used our preseason. You know, we we typically get four weeks of a preseason, and you're playing four games in a weekend. So essentially, for us, we've always had 16 games to kind of find out who those guys are and, and how they're going to fit in over the course of the, you know, the, the conference season. And the challenge for us now is that we're going straight into a conference season. Um, now, the fact that we're playing 42 conference games, I think, gives us a little more room to still experiment because you've got a longer season to try to, you know, make up some ground if you, if you fall behind or um, – you know, I think the one thing it does, obviously, the, the more conference games you play, I think it helps the, you know, the cream rise to the top. Um, you know, but no, no, uh, you know, super regional type tournaments this year. So the fact that, you know, you've got to finish in the top two in your division to qualify for the NWAC tournament. Um, there are some guys, I think, all around the league that are going to lose out on maybe some live game opportunities that they would have normally gotten early in the season. Uh, that they're just not, you know, going to get as many of those opportunities when every single game matters. And then you, you mentioned earlier, you know, you kind of, for your groups, you have, you know, pitchers, catchers, obviously together, you have a few position players in there as well, so they get live at bats. But I, I think that overall, when it comes to, to pitchers, although they're not playing actual games, this is probably the closest to what it could have been for them as they prepare for things? Because, I mean, obviously, a pitcher can go to a bullpen and, you know, get their reps in, get their work in. So, for them, it's it's not as big or as dramatic of a change. But for the position players, I think that this is going to be 
a, a lot more of a challenge for them because they can't do their normal reps, can't do all the different things they're used to being a part of. Yeah, you know, we're going to miss out on so much of the, the team game. Um, you know, I think primarily from the defensive side, like we don't have the ability to throw, you know, guys in it in at nine different positions and start hitting situational stuff and you know having guys run a base even if it's in a controlled practice situation like we don't have that ability so i think the thing that we're hoping to get the most out um, of the fall for us is just getting guys you know so many guys didn't didn't get to play the summer or didn't play much of a summer so i think just getting them back in the batter's box facing live pitching um and just competing you know and that's the biggest thing for the pitchers too right i mean like you said our, our pitchers can get in there and throw bullpens but throwing a bullpen is not the same as you know towing the rubber with with an opponent in the batter's box um and even if it's one of your own teammates uh just the the fact that they're competing against one another i think you know kind of gives it an edge over over just you know showing up in the bullpen and flipping 25, 30 pitches in and calling it a day. Yeah, that's one of the things, you know, even just with the different coaches I've talked to, you know, whether it be um, coaches in California or on the East Coast, it, I think the, the, the main thing that I've taken away from all the different discussions is they're having to be creative. They're having to find new ways to, and even new things to focus on. And I've had some coaches say, hey, we've been able to focus on certain things we normally wouldn't have gotten to, but we also are missing out on other things. So for you guys, have you had to really kind of brainstorm ways to be a little more creative, ways to make practices more efficient or more effective? Yeah, and I think that, you know, as, as we continue to have practices, I think new ways and new ideas will pop in. I mean, this is brand new to everybody. So, you know, you, you try to brainstorm and you try to envision how you think something's going to work out and then put it into play in, in live situation uh, on practice day, and it doesn't quite always play out the way that you would hope or want it to do. So uh, I think it's going to be a lot of, you know, trial by fire. We're going to try some things. Some things are going to work. Some things aren't going to work. Um, we had a lot of discussion about, you know, how to how to in, mix our groups. You know, do we put nine infielders into a group with the infielding coach? Do we put, you know, nine pitchers in a group with a pitching coach? Um, you know, we decided not to go that route because we want our pitchers to be able to throw to hitters. And if there's nine pitchers in a group, that doesn't really work. Um, so there's a lot of creativity going on. I know, you know, uh, our coaches jumped on a phone call last night and just kind of talked through the layout of our practice today and what it's going to look like. And, you know, you start bouncing ideas off of each other to see, you know, if, if I can think of something that coach Donahue didn't think of, or he thinks of something that I didn't think of that, you know, might, might cause issues. And, um, you know, I think if, after we get a week or two into it, um, it's going to be a lot easier, but, but yeah, I mean, right now it's, you're trying to essentially reinvent the wheel, except you've got a lot more restrictions on how you can build that thing. Yeah, and that's one of the things, you know, I, I'm, I'm interested to see how things play out because, you know, obviously, you know, last year with the season being cut short, the freshmen you had, you know, they, they could have the chance to play fall, a small portion of spring, so you can see a little bit of them. But but even now, you know, you're, you're almost evaluating the, the freshmen of last year with the – incoming recruits, the freshmen of this year, almost on the same level, although the guys who've been there probably had some experience, you know, they know how to how to approach things, but there's still some level of, these guys are almost on the same playing level just because of the lack of games you got to play last year. Right, I think, you know, the big advantage that the returning guys have, obviously, is they went through the entire fall with us and they did get to see, although it was a small taste, they did get a little taste of, you know, what NWAC baseball um, is all about. Um, and I think our guys, you know, got a pretty good taste of that because we played a pretty tough schedule and, and they got to see Bellevue four times and they got to see Edmonds four times. And, um, you know, I think they have a pretty good idea, of, you know, what things are going to be like over the long haul. Um, you know, the nice part about having those guys back too is that they've been through it. So even though, you know, they are freshmen and they haven't been through a whole season. 
a lot of the expectations of the program and just things that we do on a daily basis, they're able to take kind of a leadership role, just like uh, our sophomores, you know, normally would. Um, so it's 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 been helpful, I think, for those guys, um, you know. But at the same time, you know, they're now lumped into a big group of guys. You know, if you look at our roster and, and you look at the number of you know quote unquote freshmen that we have, um, there's a lot of them that are going to be competing with one another for innings this spring. Yeah, definitely. That's one of the things, you know, I'm I, I'm excited for that because I, I like to see the competition. I like to see the driving guys. But at the same time, it, it just it, it's just going to create a whole different scenario than what we're used to. And then, you know, obviously for you, you've got a chance to – you saw some of the guys last year. You know some of the incoming freshmen, stuff like that. Who are some of the guys who – you're excited about, you know, seeing what they can do. Because, I mean, obviously, once again, you got to see some of the freshmen through the fall. You got to see them through a few games in the, in the spring. What are a couple guys that you're looking at and go, hey, this guy, I'm just excited to see what he can do this year with us? Yeah, uh, well, I think if you, you know, starting at the top of the list, I think if you look at our returning sophomores, I think there's a couple pretty special guys in that group who, um, you know, they've got opportunities to do something pretty special when they're done with us. Um, you know, and one, I know last time I was on, I, I did that interview with Ezra. Um, you know, he's one. And, and I think for him, it's an opportunity for him to be healthy again. He had a, a wrist injury in the spring last year, only had one at bat and didn't get to catch. Um, but he's a pretty special talent. I think that this, you know, kind of opportunity to start over on his sophomore year is, is going to be a great opportunity for him. Um, you know, I look at our pitching staff and you know, our last game of the year in the spring uh, last year, you know, we had uh, Tucker Grode on the mound. He threw a one hit shutout against Edmonds. Um, pretty special arm. He was an all NWAC guy. Um, you know, as a freshman, he was our closer. We transitioned him into a, a starting role last year unsure you know kind of how he's going to be used this year if we move him back to the bullpen or um, if we continue to use him in a starting role I think he's got um, I think he's got really good stuff to be very effective at the division one level out of the bullpen um, so we'll kind of we'll kind of see how that plays out um, you know there was some there were some freshmen you know they got some opportunities last year um, our our guy that caught for us last year Jacob Cobb is He's a really special guy behind the plate, and he got lots of opportunities. Uh, he caught all eight games for us because Ezra was hurt. Um, you know, he, he's another guy, and you know how in this league, when you're playing four games in two days or four games in three days or however they work the schedule out, um, you have to have kept catching depth. Um, so we're really excited about, about Jacob. Um, you know, some of our other um, returning guys, I think, I think there's – there's just lots of opportunities, you know. Some of the sophomores that we moved on are going to open up some holes for guys to step in and get opportunities, um, you know, defensively. Uh, Adam Stevens is a guy who was really good for us two years ago and was going to sit out last year because of an injury. And he's back, um, you know, and he'll probably play on the left side of the infield and, and be a key guy in the lineup for us. And then, you know, we have a really big incoming class this year, um, and there's some – there's some pretty special arms in that group. Um, you know, some guys that we're really excited about, you know, and then we've got a handful of guys that we haven't really seen them play. You know, we, we uh, recruited them out of a showcase event, um, you know, didn't really get an opportunity. We have a couple guys here that, you know, our practice uh, on Saturday was the first time they've been on campus. Uh, they, they committed sight unseen. So, um, you know, we're, we're pretty excited about the, the pitching that we've brought in, I think the the pitching depth for us. I think that was one thing that was could have given us trouble last year had the season gone on. Is that we just didn't have a real deep stable of arms, um, and I think that drastically changes this year. Um, but I'll tell you, two guys I'm really excited about. Um, we have two guys from Japan. Um, Toma Marasi is a left-handed pitcher, and Riku Nishida is a left-handed hitting second baseman. Um, and I'm telling you, it's – they play the game with a different kind of energy, and I'm really excited to see what those guys, you know, can, can bring to our, our roster. 
Yeah, I actually, you know, I've had the opportunity to watch a few guys from, from overseas, whether it be Australia, Japan, and it is just fun. It's fun because it's baseball, but they have a different style about them. And it just, I don't know, I don't know what it is or how to put my finger on it, but it just, it's enjoyable. It, it almost brings a smile to my face seeing the way they approach the game and just, it just brings a lot of fun to it. Yeah, you could tell that, um, you know, these guys, are, they've been here for a few weeks now. They're, they're living with a couple of roommates from the baseball team. Uh, I think there was a little bit of shell shock, you know, when they first moved here, um, you know, but their smiles light up as soon as baseball starts, because I think that's the one thing that they have in common with everybody else here is that they love baseball and they want to continue to play at the highest level they can. And so it was as if like all the, you know, all the changes that they've made in their lifestyle and getting acclimated to living in the States has just was forgotten about because, all of a sudden they're speaking the, the baseball language, you know, and they're, they're speaking the same language as their teammates. Yeah, that, that, that is awesome to see. And I, I love seeing it. And, and I, I'm truly hoping that come spring, everything works out where I can get down there and, and cover and, and see all these guys play. Cause it's just going to be a ton of fun. But Ryan, last question I have for you, obviously the major league baseball playoff starts today. Who do you have winning the world series this year? <laughs> I'm a pitching guy, so uh, I got to lean uh, towards the teams that are pitching dominant. Um, you know, I think there's some really good arms in the playoffs. Um, you know, things intensify a little bit, and all of a sudden the scores are going to be a lot lower. And, you know, the ability to bunt a runner over and, and drive them in is, means a lot more because you're not sitting back playing for the long ball because every, uh, every game matters. Um, you know, and it's exciting to be able to watch a little bit of playoff baseball before I made my way to practice today. Um, you know, I think the Tampa Bay Rays, they, they pitch it really well. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they can, you know, put enough offense together to kind of continue the magical season you have. Um, I'm a big fan of the Cleveland Indians rotation right now. I think, you know, Shane Bieber at the top of that ro rotation, he's, He's as good as they come in baseball right now. He's he's been lights out, and you know, obviously, you get the you get the Dodgers, and and you know, anytime you got Kershaw out there, although you know his history in the playoffs doesn't uh, doesn't exactly uh, you know gone real well in the past. Um, and I'm not I'm not going to be shy about admitting that I don't mind seeing that because I'm a I'm a Giants fan at heart and. <laughs> You know, it, it it tore me up to watch him blow the last three days of the of the season when they had a chance to get in the playoffs. But um, I think uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and, and I think if I had to make a prediction right now, I might take the Indians. That is a team that I think has the offense in it. It can be scary. Like I said, their pitching is solid. It's going to be – I'm actually excited for this year's playoffs just because – you never know. The short series, you know, no days off, it really does make a big difference. But you know what? I'm just glad that baseball is happening at the college level, at the major league level. I, I'm just glad to see it happening. I, I can't agree with you more. I mean, we're excited to be out here and uh, really looking forward just to get to work with our guys again and, and help them get better. And ultimately, as junior college coaches, our number one job is to move guys on and get them opportunities that they didn't have coming out of high school. So. Uh, we're just excited to be a part of that process and, and to actually, you know, get the opportunity to be involved in that right now. Absolutely. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for taking the time. And, uh, man, I'm just – it's just so exciting to hear that NWAC baseball is back and it's working. It may be a, a variation of itself, but it's still back and it's out there being played. Absolutely. Josh, I, uh, I appreciate your time. Uh, I'm going to get ready for practice, but uh, I hope to see you uh, down here in Gresham sometime this spring. Absolutely. Thank you, Ryan. All right. Thanks, Josh. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Ryan Miller, assistant coach for Mount Hood Community College. And uh, in case you guys don't know, in the NWAC, I love the NWAC, but Mount Hood actually had uh, a former player uh, put in some major league time this year with the Mariners. They've had guys playing at the Division I level all over. It's a it's another amazing tradition program here in the Northwest. And um, I'm honored to be able to say that I am connected with them in one way or another, just be able to cover them. I've 
covered them in the NWAC tournament a number of years already. And so fun to be connected to that, fun to be a part of it. And once again, so thankful that Ryan got to take the time to, to come talk about just practice. I mean, it's practice. We're talking about practice and I, I love it. I, I, I'm fired up right now, I, I'll be honest. I am so fired up. I can go out there and, and go for a jog right now. I just want to go out and go for a run because I'm so fired up. Um, but guys, I mean, I don't know what to say. I'm just, I'm happy that baseball is being played. Major League Baseball is being played. College baseball teams are out practicing. Softball teams are out practicing. Up here in the Northwest, it is 85 degrees. Uh, and it's almost the last day of September. It's just, it's beautiful. It is perfect right now. And it's making making me feel better about this year. You know, this year has been tough, but I'm starting to see some positives, getting pumped up for 2021. Just let's just keep the momentum going. That's all I'm saying. So guys, with that, I'm calling it a podcast. Until next time, watch the Major League Baseball playoffs. They're going on right now. I can't watch it because I don't have cable, but I will find a way. I've already had a few people messaging me different ways to watch the playoffs. I'm going to take up one of their offers and, and do that. Until late, tell them, guys, talk to you later and enjoy the day.